Amr Abdul Aziz from uh, Al Quds city, and um, um, I want to uh, thank you all and greet you all for the, uh, this work that you are doing for the uh, sake of the uh, Palestinian prisoners and uh, their case. Um, first of all, I myself am an academic person and an intellectual. I was working on a dissertation in uh, postmodernist literature, English literature. Um, I, I'm not a military person, or I, I wasn't holding any guns or weapons at, uh, at any, any time. Um, I'm a, a blind person. Um, in, the, in the year 1996, I was still able to see a little bit to a, a very limited uh, extent. Uh, but I was arrested and uh, tortured for more, more, more than one month. Then I was uh, uh, terribly, in fact, tortured until I lost my uh, sight totally, and I was released to uh, a house arrest for uh, two years. Um, I'm known for uh, my intellectual works and um, in English literature and on the work of the brain and the, the work of the memory in general. I help blind persons, and uh, I have a. Uh, um, and a special intellectual um, ground of uh, philosophy, literature. Um, I'm naturally against occupation, against discrimination, against uh, um, all kinds of uh, oppression and manipulation of people and enslavement of people. Um, so this is what uh, provoked the Zionists against me. Until um, in the year 2004, on the 27th of September, um, it was only by a sudden that uh, after midnight they attacked my house and a number of uh, uh, the houses of uh, um, other neighbors. And uh, they broke down uh, everything, the, the, the walls and, and, and the doors and the windows of the, of the, the house, and they shattered um, glass and metal everywhere. And uh, they broke into the house and terrified my kids and my wife um, at night. And, and then they put the handcuffs in my hands and the uh, restrictions in, uh, uh, in my legs. And uh, they pulled me to a nearby uh, by, um, hill. And there they began to uh, terribly torture me and uh, insult me with the, uh, the filthiest words. and. Um, and they began to kick me in the, uh, in the military vehicle. Um, at the same time, um, the handcuffs and the restrictions were very, very tightened on my hands and on my legs until um, uh, my hands began to bleed and I began to lose feeling and the uh, sense in, in both hands. And I shouted at the uh, soldiers that uh, I want uh, the handcuffs at least to, to be released a little bit because uh, the blood was uh, prevented and uh, um, I felt that uh, my hands were uh, paralyzing. Um, so uh, they began to, to laugh and, and mock me and they said that uh, they did not have the keys. The keys are with the uh, military officer who went to uh, uh, search my house. And in fact, he was demolishing uh, the furniture and uh, my academic work and my personal computer and everything inside the house. And after hours, um, he came back and uh, he put his uh, gun in, in my chest and uh, said that ideas are uh, more dangerous than weapons. I said to him, yes, I ha I'm an intellectual person, an academic person, and uh, we I believe in that civilized thought and the dialogue and interactions um, and cultures. I work on uh, cross-cultural uh, works. Um, and uh, I said to him, he, he believes in, in violence and torture and weapons. And uh, as an example, they were torturing me. And uh, I, I gave him the, 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 the very same example that I, I, I've, I was being tortured and uh, the, the, with the, the handcuffs tightened, or tightened on my hands. And he said, you, um, he threatened me. He said, you will see soon. 
and they, they took me to Al Maskubiya, which is uh, the detention center known to the Palestinians as the, the butchery because they, they, they are terribly tortured in that uh, center. Um, uh, from the very first moment, they began to also to insult me and use the filthiest words against me and against the Arabs and the Palestinians and sometimes even against the Islam and the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And uh, then they forced me to undress by force. I refused and uh, they, they, they just took me from my hands and my legs and, and pulled out my clothes by force. And uh, they, they claimed that they, they wanted to search me. And uh, after that, uh, they began sometimes to uh, uh, shackle my hands and legs to, to a small leaning chair that keeps the body sliding forward until I be also began to, to bleed. And uh, sometimes they uh, just pushed me and uh, um, hit me on, on, on my head and on, on my chest. Um, they, I, I wanted to understand because I did not know for, for what reason all of that thing was going on. And uh, after some time they uh, claimed that I was uh, visualizing and uh, guarding a group of Palestinians um, uh, who went out to carry out a, a military operation and I asked them where, where I did that and, what, and how come that I'm a blind person, how can I do that? And he, they said that I did that at my house. That, that was really very, very strange. For whom do I visualize and guard people at my house? For what reason? And uh, um, after that, uh, I felt that it wasn't at all a kind of interrogation. Uh, they were using me on, in one case as a, uh, a guinea pig of experiment. And sometimes they, they just torture me for saddest reasons, for race, racist reasons, for, for, uh, uh, for because of my intellectual um, uh, uh, character. So um, they shackled me at uh, one of the chairs in one of the cells and uh, shackled my hands and legs to, to that chair and they directed that beam of very, very, very painful uh, ray right into my head. And I can never forget that suffering. It went on for hours. I had terrible headaches and pain in, inside my head. And they kept pushing that uh, ray inside, trying to move as if trying to move something inside my brain. And I spent hours I was screaming and shouting to no avail. And uh, then after that, uh, they took me to uh, another cell in which uh, the jailer who, who uh, just uh, grabbed me and, and pulled me inside, he said uh, he had the uh, two mattresses. One of them is, was a thin mattress and the other one was a thick mattress. And uh, he said he, he wanted to offer me the uh, thick mattress to uh, relax on it. When I lay my body on that uh, mattress and uh, I was really fatigued and exhausting and terribly uh, tired, um, I felt that terrible electric shock across my body until I felt all of my bones, all of my skeleton, and I felt my flesh detached from the bones. This is a, a very strange thing that I had in my life. It was so terrible, so painful, uh, but I felt my body was totally paralyzed and I could not even uh, shout or speak out any single word. Um, but uh, I felt that I was still able to know what is going on. Um, I, I, I did not lose concentration. But uh, after some time, um, I began to, re to regain some power and I pushed my body uh, and it dropped myself beside the, the mattress. And they called once again, uh, and I still remember the name that they called. They ca called someone, his name is Soli. Soli, and, and they, they came back. I do not know what the name of the persons who came, but they held me and threw me again on that uh, mattress, and I got 
got that terrible shock once again. Um, they were trying to destroy me physically. In another case, uh, they took me to uh, another cell and uh, shackled my hands and legs again. And they began to make uh, very, very loud, uh, painful uh, sounds from all directions. And uh, what I understood from that uh, experiment as well is that they were trying to break me psychologically. Uh, because when I uh, tried to uh, concentrate in one direction to uh, focus on the source of the sound, uh, the, the sound came from the opposite direction. And I kept trying to uh, figure out from the backward, the frontward, and <coughs> left and right. It was so terrible. So, uh, in, in many examples, they took me uh, to another cell. Someone stood beside me and began to spray something on my face. And I tried to capture the man. I, th I thought that he, he had a, uh, a machine or something that he used for that. I tried twice, then I could not. The third time, I just uh, uh, grasped that, that person, and uh, he was only one person. I wanted to, know, to see what he had in his hand, but he refused. He pushed his hand away. And I asked him what uh, kind of machine he was using for, uh, for me and for what reason. And uh, he said it's, it wasn't a machine. He said it was only a material that makes the one who does not want to speak, he, it makes him speak out. And uh, then they came at once and took me to another cell and uh, uh, I don't know what, what's happened to that uh, criminal. Uh, in one example, also, that uh, they broke into my cell and they opened my hand uh, at once and I put a number of pills in my hand and got a glass of water and said that I had to take that medicine. And I asked them for what reason. And uh, because I, I, I did not go to any physicians, they said it was a medicine for my eyes. And that I was really surprised. I, mean, I, do not, uh, I am a blind person and um, I did not go to any uh, physicians. Um, so um, uh, they wanted to give me the medicine by force and I refused. And uh, then they said, no, no, it was a mistake. It wasn't a medicine for me. It was uh, for, for another person. And they left. Uh, uh, in fact, they, they tried many different ways until I reached the cell, the, the, the death cell. They made a little conversation uh, between one another, and they said that uh, uh, they got a permission, um, approved, a fax, uh, stamped and approved, uh, approved to, to shoot me. And they pushed me inside that cell. Uh, when I put my hands on the wall to find my way, I found a, a very big number of round holes on that wall. Uh, with something like blood um, on, on the wall. It was so dirty and so terrible. It was so cold in the midst of winter. And uh, they locked the door and I began to, uh, to wait for them to shoot me, uh, maybe from the uh, opening of, uh, of that. Uh, there was a small uh, opening in, in that wall, uh, uh, door. Um, literally, I waited for them to shoot me, because they, they said that, and uh, I was the, uh, I, I found the place as if it was done for shooting people or something like that. But uh, I found myself on my face after a long time on the floor. It was so cold, and some blood was coming out of my nose. So I began to shout and to tell them that I'm bleeding and I want um, some treatment. Um, I heard someone with heavy steps walking towards the, the, the door, but he did not talk to me any single word. I believe that he saw me because he came close to the door, but 
he did not say anything. And then after that, they took me to another cell, that solitary cell, um, that was uh, very, very terrible. I spent about 35 days. Um, the cell um, did not have any mattresses, did not have any clothes. It was very, very wet and cold. It has a, a two-story um, iron bed. Um, the bottom one has literally a pool of water on it. And the upper one was wet, but without a, tool, a pool of water. And uh, when I wanted to sleep, I had to sit on the upper one and, uh, and relax. But in fact, I could not sleep. I did not know anything about the time. It was so tragic. It was so tragic and painful. I did not know if it is day or night. When I wanted to pray, I had to pray um, a number of times for each prayer, for, for each salat, so it, one of them would be, come on the right time. Um, I kept shouting for every sound I heard out of that cell, which I can never, ever forget. I shouted at the people, if you, I don't mind if they are Arabs or Jews or Zionists or whatever. I said, if anybody hears me here, tell anybody in the world about me. I'm still alive, but I'm dying. Tell the um, media. Tell the human rights, tell my family if you, if you know. And I gave my name and my phone number a number of times. But nobody responded to me. And uh, I remained in that uh, terrible cell. Uh, I just uh, remember that after about three weeks, I had a uh, short story that I kept shouting on them to give me a bottle, an empty bottle to use it for the water. Because when I wanted to drink water, I had to put my hand beside the wall and uh, they turn the tap, which makes the water um, uh, drops from the upper side of the wall, from a hole on, on the wall, to my hand, and I, I drink from my hand. So I wanted a bottle of water uh, to, to use it for, for the water, for drinking. And after three weeks, once they uh, through that bottle, and they uh, always threw the uh, food once a day uh, from the opening. It was a piece of bread with one tomato or one egg, and they always threw that uh, on the floor, which was very, very dirty. And I had to search for it and eat it. That was so terrible, but uh, when I got that bottle, there was a, uh, a very small, uh, wire coming out of the wall. I may uh, use it for making a, a very thin hole at the bottom of the uh, bottle. And I uh, filled it with water and I used it as a clock. From time to time I held that bottle and uh, measured how much time was done. Um, I found that uh, I have to fill it twice a day uh, before the next um, uh, food that they threw from, from the uh, opening of the door. Um, but uh, it was so terrible. When I was, uh, oh, uh, suddenly, I, it, it's so, so terrible because it, at the end they came to me and they said I had a visit and I did not know what that means because I've never visited anybody and nobody visited me before. So when they took me out of the cell, and pulled me, in fact, after them. One of the prisoners uh, saw me and he began to cry like a child. And, and I still remember the name of that prisoner because I asked about him afterwards. Um, they took me, uh, in fact, yes, they took me to a visit. Um, and uh, I heard the voice of my mother from behind the bars and the, uh, the glass there were very small um, openings, and very small holes in, in the glass. But I did not want her to see me at all because I did not want to shock her. Um, she wanted to see me, but uh, alhamdulillah, the, 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 there were screens of metal and bars and glass. 
she, she could not see me, but she heard my voice. Um, and I told her that um, I want a lawyer and I'm, um, I was still alive, but she said that the, 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 you're not allowed to have a lawyer at that time. Um, and then I began to see the other prisoners and to see those tragic situations of the others. But I remember that uh, on that day of the visit also that I had a big quarrel with the uh, jailers because I refused to go back to the cell. And they began to push me and kick me and um, do all criminal things against me. I, they, they asked what, what, what I want. I said, I want the sun because it's, I felt the sun on my skin for the first time after so long. So. Uh, I wanted to feel that, the warmth of the sun. Um, I, I was in a very, very cold cell, wet and rotting, in fact. So uh, they made some communications um, and pushed me into uh, a very small yard, uh, which was like a small room, but uh, without a roof. So I got the sun for about say, half an hour. 40 minutes, something like that. I warmed my body on the floor and I just moved and walked around until they took me back uh, to the cell. Then after a few days, they took me to uh, uh, the prison where I began to meet the, the other prisoners. It was, uh, I discovered the place for the first time because I did not know where I was. All, all during all that period of time until my mother told me that uh, um, she came to visit me at Beersheba prison. And uh, I began to meet the other prisoners and I saw the tragic situations. Uh, some of them who spent more than 30 years in prison. Some of them lost their hands and their legs and sometimes some, some of them were suffering from uh, cancer, some, some of them um, were suffering from uh, diabetes and um, they did not have any, any treatment. Um, seven life sentences plus 30 years because they believed that I had uh, visualized and, uh, and, and watched for a group of Palestinians who went out to Israel to make a uh, military operation. This is what they claimed, and uh, they did not have any proof against me. Uh, they only used a, a secret file, they call it, a secret file that's given to the judge. And uh, he's not a judge, anyway. We just uh, maybe call them judge, judges, but they are not. They are, they are really uh, criminals themselves, and they, they only do what the uh, security system tells them what to do because they give them the secret file and this secret this file um, is not disclosed to anybody even to the lawyer is not allowed to see what is going on in that file so um, at the beginning there were through uh, three uh, uh, the so-called judges one of them uh, said that I was uh, totally innocent and he did not believe the story of the security and two of them um, uh, one of them uh, read my file and accused me, and the other one just voted with the one who accused me, and therefore they sentenced me. So I went to an appeal to the uh, so-called high court uh, in Israel. It wasn't a court at all. Um, I paid so much money, about 30,000 uh, US dollars. And then after that, um, the, the lawyer, uh, he just uh, made everything, but they did not discuss anything. They, they just, uh, um, after um, two or three sessions, they said that uh, nothing uh, has changed and uh, I will have the same sentence. Um, so, so it wasn't at a court at all. And uh, um, I spent the seven years and a month in prison in very, 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 very inhuman conditions. And as a blind person, it was even uh, worse than the situation of the other prisons. Because uh, 
nobody uh, was helping me when I was in the uh, solitary cell. And uh, I, uh, I did not have any way to write to my family. Uh, they, I went to the court uh, to ask for uh, any tool for the blind person to write to, to his kids and to his wife or to his mother. And uh, the so-called judge, and he was obviously he was a real criminal on that day, instead of uh, approving that, he said to the other persons uh, from the security in, in the court, he said, uh, this man, because we, we don't have a death penalty here, he, he's, uh, he's asking for a tool, a typewriter for a blind person. And that was the, his response. So I, even when I was arrested, I had a talking watch. And they took that watch from me. And I spent the seven years trying through the Red Cross and the, uh, um, the family and the lawyer to get just a talking watch. And I could not. For more than seven years, I did not have a talking so uh, um, these are not prisons. These are places where people are concentrated for torture and for slow death. And uh, in some cases, some of the prisoners died and they, um, they claimed that they committed suicide. And we don't have such suicide thing in our society because the, all the people are um, Muslims and they don't uh, believe in suicide. Uh, so how come that these people who are taken to uh, to the cells come back to us, just uh, corpses, the dead people, and they claim that they committed suicide? Um, sometimes they attacked the cells at night and arrested us again and kidnapped us from the, our cells. And they took us out under the, the rain and spent the whole night uh, claiming that they were searching the, the room. Um, so they took out all of our luggages and put them under the rain. And they kept us in the, uh, with the handcuffs to, to our back and the, the restrictions in our legs. And they went on uh, claiming that they were searching um, the cell. And when we get back uh, after about uh, eight hours, uh, we find that everything is mixed up and uh, wet, and uh, we were very, very uh, tired and uh, exhausted. Um, sometimes they punish us for everything. If we, um, uh, sometimes we put a uh, very thin wire on the window just to make a, a reception for our radio set. And uh, they come at night and they examine with the flashes the, the wall and when they find the, the, uh, the thin wire, they punish everybody in the cell. Um, they prevent us to go out to, to the yard for a month. And they took uh, all the uh, electric things in, in, in the cell, like the uh, radio set and the TV, and there, there was a uh, electric heater. Um, they took them out, and they lock us, and they prevent us from buying anything. Uh, uh, we buy sometimes soap or um, extra food because they don't uh, give us proper food. And sometimes they punish us with, by preventing our, our families from, to visit us. It's a, it's a place that at this moment I can't bear the feeling that I, at this moment I remember that there are some people who are in solitary cells for now for about 14 years. One of them from Jerusalem, his name is Mahmoud Isa. And other people uh, who are now suffering because uh, of their wounds and their, their diseases. And the others, they go and search around for just a piece of bread or a 
one egg or something like that. They're, they're really, an, the, you know, in, in, in prison, the prisoners, they try to help one another. But how can you become a physician, a psychologist, or a, uh, someone who wants to help someone who is detached from his family and his kids, or who heard about his parents who, who died? Or, um, it's a it's a situation that uh, makes someone wait, waits for the impossible, either to die or to get a miracle to get you out of prison. So Alhamdulillah, and I got the miracle on that, I'm released. If I wasn't released, how come that? How can the world know about what is going on in prison? The people in prison. Um, in, in my case, it's only the example, and it's not the worst example, because there are many, many others who are now the ones who lost um, parts of their bodies, because um, I, I just remember one of them who was released, you can interview the person, he's in, in Gaza. Um, this person uh, went to, to the uh, so-called uh, uh, jail physician, and he's not a physician, they call him Hufesh, uh, he's a paramedic or something. Um, he had the symptoms of diabetes, and the so-called physician said to him, you have uh, a disease that uh, uh, requires you to take so much sweets, to, that, that would help you. And this uh, fellow man, uh, prisoner, he went and began to take sugar and, uh, and uh, drink juice and stuff like that. Um, and uh, he, he got uh, his body totally damaged by the uh, diabetes. And uh, he fainted. And when they called, uh, he was taken. And then he began to take three injections every day. Uh, because he got uh, uh, something uh, physically uh, damaged. So uh, he, he's now in, in, in Gaza, and uh, his, his name is Ibrahim Darius. So uh, sometimes they uh, tell the prisoners uh, drunk uh, uh, things to, to do. They give them wrong instructions uh, to, to destroy more and more their uh, physical bodies. And, uh, um, I myself, uh, uh, when uh, I, I did not, uh, I could not walk for a period of time, so I told the uh, uh, paramedic that I can't walk, and uh, I, I went to the hospital. And then after that, I went because uh, I had a problem in the lung and I could not sleep for a very long time because of the pains in my head and my lung. So they said that they will take me to uh, the uh, so-called hospital. And uh, after months, they took me. Um, we traveled hours and hours with handcuffs and restrictions in our legs in the so-called post town, which is made of iron. We just kept moving from one prison to another until at the end I, I reached the hospital. Well, I, if, 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 I was, if I wasn't sick, I would be a hundred times sick after that terrible journey. When I was uh, in, inside that, uh, it was a prison at Ar Ramli, it is not a, uh, uh, it, it, it wasn't a hospital. But some people who come for training practices or something claim that they are uh, physicians. Um, I went and uh, I wanted them to examine uh, my head and my lung. This is why I went to the paramedic. And they said to me, no, uh, we did not bring you for your head and lung. So why did you bring me? They said, for your legs. And uh, my legs was uh, a very, very long time before, before that. They, they said that uh, you will get the result, uh, you will go to the prison. Um, so I spent in that uh, 
prison uh, just one night. I came in the evening and in the morning I had uh, to, to leave. And um, I've never got any, any prison. So, uh, at, uh, in, in that uh, so-called hospital, I met the people with uh, iron, with screws, with all kinds of things in their bodies and their wounds. Their situation is so tragic. And uh, it wasn't a hospital. I met uh, some people who were um, claiming that they, they were nurses or trying to help them, but they were insulting them, using filthy words against them. And uh, they leave them in very, very uh, shameful situations. Sometimes they open the uh, bathroom, uh, get into the bathroom while the uh, um, sick people are taking a shower or just uh, going for the, uh, uh, the uh, bathroom. Um, it was a uh, uh, terribly inhuman and beyond every human imagination how come that uh, such criminals have full power absolute power to do whatever they want to do. They believe that they are above the law, and nobody in the world would hold them accountable for their crimes. So uh, they believe that uh, all the crimes that they do against the prisoners, the world would not know about it. And they isolate the prisoners. At the present time, you've got uh, those in the solitary Jamal Abu Hajjah has one hand, and Hassan Salami has a psychological problem, and um, Ahmed Al Mughrabi, I heard his voice once in, in the cell. Um, he's in, in the solitary, and he was also, while talking to me, he had, I felt that he had some psychological problems. Um, it's a I think every prisoner needs a, a file of his own and a lawyer, so maybe a number of people to try to help that person and know what is going on with the, that uh, prison. But uh, it's good that you are doing this, and I hope that uh, you will get uh, the message uh, and convey to the world, because I myself, I feel that. Uh, I owe so much to those prisoners who, uh, whom I knew about their situation, and I got the same experience. So how can I um, um, just uh, uh, tell their voice and, their, and they, um, um, make the, the, their, their message known to the, to the world? It's so tragic. It is not, uh, the, 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 the Israelis, they just rely on the thing that they nobody knows, and nobody would uh, uh, inquire, and nobody would hold them accountable for such crimes. They told us so so many times. They said to me that even if I die in, in prison, I would never be released. My body would remain there. And I said to them, Alhamdulillah, I will be released, and you will be, and you should be, should be, and you deserve to be in prison. And alhamdulillah, I'm, I'm released. And, uh, inshallah, justice will prevail, inshallah.